Hi there. Today we're going to learn how to make a do-rag. Using a pair of scissors, not the scissors that you use for cutting fabric. Always be sure to cut your patterns with scissors that are not your fabric scissors because um, it dulls them. If you use their fabric scissors for cutting paper, it dulls them too much. And what you do is cut on all the solid lines. Cut out the solid lines. The dotted lines don't cut those, leave a little bit of paper past the dotted lines. For now, you'll see why afterwards. The next step is to tape the pieces together at their corresponding letters. So now you'll understand why I left the dotted line. In this case, you know, both of the B's have an extra piece of paper next to them, so I'm just going to cut off one of them. At this point, you'll decide which one. Excuse my fingernails, by the way. I had acrylic nails put on a few weeks ago, and it was so hard to work with them, I ended up yanking them off, and as you know, it leaves them scuffed up underneath. So here we have B with B. So we tape those. Get a piece of scotch tape and just line them up like this. And to start, just put a piece of tape onto the flat surface just to hold them in place. And then once it's nice and, you know, held in place, you can, um, you know, tape them together you know, with the tape. If you feel like if you need it to be very sturdy, you know, tape it well along the back. So do that with all the other pieces too. Line up the, the matching letters. Now bear in mind this is folded, so here we go. See, this is one big piece of fabric, so you fold it exactly in half, because bear in mind, over here is the fold. You need to use the fold. So the first piece is the, the piece that's the tie, and you want this piece, for a really good do-rag, you want it to be doubled double the size, so start like this, just fold up from the bottom. Place this edge along the fold and put this right here along the fold on both sides. Exactly along the fold. This is to get a double face tie. If you just want a single face tie, you, you know, let's say you don't have enough fabric for, for all of all of what you need. So then you could make it single faced, but I like it double faced. It makes a, especially if it were a patterned fabric, maybe in a, in a black fabric it won't make much of a difference, but so you go like that. Now there are different things you can do. You can put pins in to hold it in place. You can put a weight or two, which I sometimes like to do, or I'm using this it's basically children's slime. Uh, it's not even for children because it's got some boric acid in it, but if you look on YouTube, you'll see videos how to make slime. And this is a sort of semi-sticky one that I've made. I've used some green uh, face mask. But what I find is this is just the perfect texture. Now, I, I'm going to make some clear as well. This is the perfect texture because it's sticky enough to hold the the item, the pattern piece in place. Maybe I'll use a little less. You know. Um, and it does not stick to the fabric. I've even left it on the fabric and went off to get, have lunch or something and come back. And it did not leave any residue or anything stuck to the fabric. And even if it did, it's water soluble. So I've been using this to hold my pattern pieces down. All right. So if you'd like to buy this, it's in my shop for sale, or just Google how to make slime, and then you'll have to experiment to see which is the perfect texture for you. I think I found the perfect texture. All right, so remember, this is on a fold, this is on a fold, and now we're going to just cut that 
right out. Right there. We can get it on from this side now. Just cut that off. There we go. Oops. There. All right. Now we just peel this off. And this comes off easily. What doesn't come off is water soluble, but uh, just comes off very easily. See, and you, as I said, even if it were to dry on there, you just peel it off. It comes off as a hard piece. I also have a clear one for sale in my shop. That's the tie. I'll show you all the pieces at the end. Okay, the next step is to, so we've got that out of the way. As long as the three pieces fit on double fabric, you know, that's the size of fabric. But it's, let's say you want to make sure you have plenty of fabric. This, this fabric, I believe, is um, about 48 inches wide. So it, it gives me a little more room than necessary. So I'm going to put this piece here and put that in place and cut that out. Now, again, remember, it's two. It's double. So this is going to have symmetrical mirror image pieces, you know, symmetrical. So we're going to put that one there. And I'm going to cut this one out now. Just, you know, cut it carefully around the fabric. All right, so now we have these two symmetrical pieces. This one. Peel that off. Okay. You can use the same ones, the same little balls of compound. Okay, and the last step is, in this case, you're going to open up your fabric again because you want a symmetrical piece that's on a fold. So in this case, it's just going to be two. Let me cut this extra fabric off. This is, this is actually way too long. I hope I'm still on the camera so I don't have to refilm this. But So it's just going to be a simple fold. So it's just you're just cutting through two pieces of fabric here. Okay, so the edge here, right on the fold. Oop, need a little more. There you go. And we'll put our we'll put our compound just to hold it in place. You probably will want to buy, purchase a clear one if you decide to buy from me. Or if you decide to make one on your own, use either a clear face mask, you know, peel off face mask it has to be. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to give a tutorial on how to make it, but it's very easy. You just do a Google on YouTube, how to make slime, and you'll see all the different recipes. It's a lot of fun to make, too. Okay, so we've got that on the fold, and we'll cut out our final piece. Okay, here are all the pieces. This is the tie for the, the head tie. I'll just put it here for now. Here's the middle head piece, right side facing up. And here are the two side head pieces. So take the first side head piece. And what we're going to do is, this is the right side up here. We want to line it up. So take that flat edge with this flat edge and just see what I'm doing here's the round piece the bottom flat edge line it up with the flat edge at the beginning of the side head piece I've got some pins here on the magnet we're lining up the round edge of the side head of the side head piece to the straight edge of the middle head piece. 
So watch how I do it. Uh, I'm not wearing my glasses, but line it up. I'm doing it so that you can see. See, and we're doing it. The confusion come, has come from some of you who have written to me when you get to this little kind of crooked area. Don't stop there. People think that they have to go all the way and stop at the crooked area. That's not, that's not what you're supposed to do. You have to keep going. So we line up to the crooked, I call it the crook, you know, the, the crooked area. It's, a, it's actually an inverted dart. It's a, the opposite of a dart is a gore. So you don't stop where it, where it crooks. You keep going alongside that crook. Just continue doing the same thing, lining up beyond that part. The only reason I added that gore the um, into the pattern is to give the final product the, the final product of a more finished smoother look when I didn't have that there it was it was a little bit um, bumpier the seams were bumpier and that that helps to smooth out the seams when you finish sewing so go all the way to the end of the middle head piece it's actually good to to fold that flat piece over, finish the raw edge first before sewing the entire do rag together. And then just top stitch that. I mean, get an iron. Iron that down and top stitch that first before sewing the do rag. See, here you have the finished edge. And now the the next step is to take, here's that middle strip, and here's the side head piece. It's a little confusing the first time, but you basically do this. The flat piece goes against this flat piece, like this. So just cross it over and line them up right sides together and stick a pin in it. So there we go, we've got all the pins in, all the way, all the way, and then this one is left, you know, just at the end. This is. So now you're going to sew, go to the sewing machine, and line it up. I'm using the edge of the presser foot, which is about a quarter inch from where it's sewing. So uh, take that first one out and start sewing. Um, back stitch it that knots the end of the thread so keep it as flat when you get to that portion where you're sewing keep it as flat as possible and following along the edge to make sure that it's sewing an even mark uh, an even seam allowance all the way around now I got to the pin take the pin out and keep sewing and you know guide it nothing should be forced you're guiding it okay just where you're sewing has to be flat it doesn't matter that the rest is all bunched up you just want to make sure you don't accidentally sew any of the wrinkles so adjust it as you go there's no rush as you get better at sewing of course you'll be doing it a lot quicker but right there see I'm using the edge of the presser foot in this case if you want to larger seam allowance you move it over and use one of these guidelines on this on the other side to guide what you're doing okay so before you continue check and make sure that the piece that you're sewing underneath is flat 
and that everything is even. Okay, and continue. Watching the edge of the fabric and just kind of guiding it. You're not forcing it. The, the machine is pulling the fabric. It has an automatic pulling mechanism that pulls the fabric through, fabric through. So all you're doing is guiding the fabric. It's like driving a car. I'm stepping on the accelerator and I'm driving. The, you know, there's no steering wheel. The steering wheel is the edge of the fabric that you're just guiding. That's how you can think of it. When you drive a car, you're not pushing or pulling the car to make it go. You're pressing the accelerator and all you're doing is steering it. So that's what you do in sewing, the same principle. You're steering the fabric. I'm steering the fabric to stay lined up where I want it to go. Stay in your lane. It's annoying. There, and now I'm at the end, just one more stitch, and then to knot the end so that it doesn't come undone. I've gone a teeny bit too far, actually, but just press this button up here and goes backwards. So now, uh, if you're gonna sew the other side by machine, you do the same thing as you just did on the other side. Lining up, you know, you line it up like this. See, here's the side piece. I hope I'm far enough where you could see the whole thing. So you're lining it up like this. Pin that first part. I don't have a pin handy right now. P pin that and then start pinning it. You know, always work right sides together because then once you, once you finish sewing it, you turn it inside out and it'll be like this. We've sewn the other side on. So now you have this. Now we just have to sew the bottom piece on and then finish the edges. Um, so fold it in half, so that's how you find the middle point. You can hold it or just leave it, you know, if you iron it, whatever you'd like. Then find the middle of the cap, which is easy. Just fold that mid strip, just find the middle of that, which is, you can just fold it in half and find the middle point there. You might want to mark it with a pencil or something. I think that's what I'll do. One sec. Got a pencil here. Okay, so, or some, depending on the fabric, if you squish hard enough, you might even just get a nice crease. Yeah, I actually do, so I don't need the pencil. So we have that midpoint, and this is the middle of this one. You can tell by folding that in half as well. So then lie, lie the two pieces together and pay attention to the pattern, how you want it to show. I like it, I like it to show this way. Now it's gonna be uh, upside down from what you get. So, so line those two midpoints, line it together. See how I'm doing it right sides together because you do the seam so that the yucky part stays in the middle there. And now, same as before, just line up the edges this seam that's in the middle, tuck the seam over, to, over, pointing inward. That mid seam is connected, remember, to the tail, where at the end you're going to be finishing the tail off, so you want it in. Go ahead and line that up all the way around, up until this point, pointing that way. And now just go ahead and sew all along. You starting on this side. Now on your sewing machine you might have to adjust it and put the free arm uh, if you're using the sewing machine. Otherwise if you sew by hand you would have prior to putting this on um, you could draw the quarter inch seam on there so you sew if you're sewing by hand you can sew in a straight line. Here's what I'm going to point out. Okay, I've sewn on the the strap now. When I cut the fabric, I noticed there was this design. So I decided to take advantage of the design that was on the fabric and, for example, this strap, I decided to put it along, along the design. You know, it takes a little planning ahead, but I decided to place the strap along this, this um, design so that it would come out like this. 
and the top pieces as well. I didn't just randomly place them on the fabric. I looked at the design and I said, oh, okay, I want my final result to come out, you know, with, you know, kind of messed up a little here, but, um, you know, how you want the final result to look is how you lay it on the fabric. And that takes practice. Everything takes practice. You know, sort of seeing ahead to what's going to come. I still don't like the way I sewed these on, but uh, so that's how I get this sort of design up here. Okay, the next step now, we're going to fold this strap because I decided to make it double width. You could have cut it off, cut it half this width and just made it, you know, have the edges, uh, then just fold over the raw edges. But I like to have a thick strap, which I then, when I'm sewing, when I'm finishing it up, I fold that strap in half all along the whole do rag and I sew that so that the do rag has sort of a double strap because since that's what you tie around your head, you know, double fabric makes it a little stronger. Yeah. And it, it's a nice effect. The inside has the right side of the fabric pointing out just like the back side does. Now we're just I fold over the end. Is it up too high? Wait a minute. So I fold over the end of the strap. And I've already done it, but this is to demonstrate. Fold over the end and iron that down. And then this part, you know, pretend it hasn't been folded yet. You just fold it over about a quarter of an inch or, you know, just a small amount. It actually doesn't matter. The thinner you want it, the but um, you'll see it lines up with this seam here. So just lay it all flat and, you know, iron that down too. And do the same with the bottom. Iron that down too, all the way around. It's easier if you have an ironing board. You, you hang this on the end of the ironing board and you, you, know, you might want to do it inside out. You know, iron that. And then the last step, after you've ironed down all the raw edges, is fold, the, fold this in half. So you see how it, it gives you a nice finish. And then, just with the sewing machine, sew to here, turn the corner, sew all the way down here, you know, the whole thing. You sew it in half. That's going to be a top stitch, so the stitch is going to be visible. So you have to be extra careful to do as straight as possible so it looks nice. Uh, or even if you would have cut it thinner, you didn't do it double, but you would fold under this end, then that would the stitch would be here instead of up here. I like it better up here. All edges on the tail, that's all that we have left. Um, I didn't do this part, but you can fold it over once. I like how it looks better folded over twice, so I try to give it a double. It seems to go over easier once because the seam is there. But I like to I like to give it a two two folds. It just I think it looks more finished. So you don't see any raw edges even when it flips up. Like that. So you would fold it over once, iron it fold it over again, iron it, do the same on this side, fold it over once, iron it flat, fold it over again, iron it flat, and then here, and what happens here is when you fold it over twice on both sides, one, two, for example, and then this one also, one, two, that flat edge, you can't really tell now because I'm doing it very haphazardly, but that end turns into a point, you know, try to kind of stick the, the raw edges in too, fold the point over as well, so that no raw edges are, are, are out. 